Hello and welcome to a brand new video tutorial for Cinema 4D. In this tutorial, I like to show you a workflow how you can use Cinema 4D's pyro system and render it out in another 3D renderer. In this example, I want to use Chaos Corona. But before we dive in, I like to show you how you can create a simple fire system in Cinema 4D. So come up here and create a sphere. You can choose whatever object you like. I choose a sphere and I set it to 20 centimeters. Then I go to right click on the sphere object and under the simulation tags, I choose pyro. So what Cinema does now, it's creating a pyro tag and the pyro system object. So when we now press play on the timeline, you can see that the fire will be generated. And the impressive thing is how fast it is and how simple it is to set up a simple fire setup. Now, I don't want to go too deep into all the settings of the pyro tag. There are other really, really good tutorials in the Maxon training team. There are pyro tutorials that explains every single setting. So check that out. But here I just want to show you a very, very simple fire setup. Okay. But one thing I want to mention here is you can change the object voxel size. So the smaller this value is, the more finer the voxels get and the more detailed the fire will be. But be careful to not going too low with a very, very low voxel size. Your calculation probably will take forever or you bring your system to crash. So it depends how strong your system is. So be careful with this value. So here is our fire with a voxel size of five. So let's change that to, let's say about two. And we also can change for the entire pyro system, the voxel size to two rewind and press play and as you can see now that the fire has way more details right than before and this is the voxel size of two centimeters and it's still running really really fast okay it's depending on what system you have how strong your system is but in the most cases it runs really really smooth and very fast all right so now here we have our fire and we want to render this out with redshift okay so what you normally do is you go in and hit the redshift render vpr and as you can see, you see nothing. You see only the sphere and nothing else. You don't see the fire. So what happened now? So you need a pyro volume material. So let's stop the renderer. And what you have to do is create redshift materials and then pyro volume material. Next, apply this pyro volume material to the pyro default object okay let's press play again and you can see still no fire so why is this okay so why it's not working select the pyro system object and then in here in the object tab as you can see here that the default setting here color temperature 
fuel, velocity, pressure, divergence, density. Some of them are set on export and some of them are set to off. Okay. So to see it into the render viewport, we have to turn on this settings that we need to see the fire. So in this case, I want to see the density, the color and the temperature, but I will turn everything on just for demonstrate. And now let's start the IPR again. And now you can see the fire into the renderer. Okay, so to recap, you have to create a pyro volume material first, add it to the pyro default system object, and then into the object tab, you have to turn on all the settings. So now how we can use this fire in another renderer. Okay, so we have to export all the data into a VDB cache format. Okay, so for that, I select all the settings on export. Then I go to cache, cache scene, click on that, choose a folder where you want to save your cache file, and then your simulation is cached. So now let's jump into my prepared scene. So here is my pyro scene. And as you can see, it's already cached. So this is why I can scroll through the timeline. And this is my fireplace I created. Okay. So here again, I have these wood pieces and every wood piece has its own pyro tag. I have a pyro object tag with the pyro volume material applied. For the cache file, here is my cache file, which is located here. Now when we press the Redshift interactive renderer, as you can see, I have my wood parts, I have my fire and everything works great. So this is how to set up a simple fire setup to use it in Redshift. So now we jump right into the same scene and it's ready for using in Corona. All right, so here we are in the scene that is prepared for the Corona renderer. And as you can see, it's the same scene and I have the same timeline, but no fire. So we have to bring in the fire into the scene first. So if you have Corona installed, there is the Corona tab here. And the first thing we have to do is choose the Corona volume grid. Click on the Corona volume grid and on the, under the object tab, there is object properties and here is select file. So click on that and locate your folder that you created to save your cache file. In this case, it is this cache seen here. And as you can see, there are the cache file saved here, 250 frames, and the format is VDB. So click on the first one and press open. So now the cache file is loaded in. And when we scroll the timeline, the first thing you will see is a huge box. Okay, so you can change that down here. I change from bounding box to point cloud and increase the quality. So we have all the points available into the scene. And here is our fire. But what you can see is that the axis is wrong. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to rotate the Corona volume grid object and by minus 90 degrees. So now it's correct in the orientation. And when we scroll through the timeline, we can see that there is a cloud, a point cloud that representing our fire. 
So now it's time to fire up the Corona Interactive Render. And right away, because we use a Corona Volume Grid, the temperature, the color, and all the informations that we exported from the Redshift scene to Corona is already impl implemented into this cache file. So we can see the fire without adding any kind of a pyro material. It's already in the scene. But when you look closer, it looks different, okay? So it's way smaller than the Redshift version and it's not so bright and it's not so visible, okay? So this has to do with the settings of the Corona Volume Grid. So now we jump right into the settings. So here you can see you have emission, absorption, and scattering. So on the emission tab, it's already set to temperature, which is correct. And we increase the temp temperature scale to 8,500. And now you see that the fire comes alive, okay? We can use the multiplier here to make the fire even a bit brighter if you need to. And then into the absorption tab, which actually is the smoke, it's set to density. Okay, even here we can increase the multiplier if we need or if you like. So I set that back to one. And the last setting is the scattering. So when we turn that on, this is set to color. So you can see now we get this really fine details in the fire. And this fire already looks pretty good to me. So now I want to show you how you can improve the look of the fire even more by using Chaos Corona. And for that, I jump back right into the redshift scene and I want to show you that setting here. So we exported all the data into the cache file, okay? And we have access to every attribute that we exported here, okay? So I want to show you that when we go into the Corona Volume Grid, I can rename this fire. So what I do is I select the fire and duplicate it and rename this to particles, okay? So I turn off the fire and on the particle volume grid, I turn off the absorption and I turn off the scattering. And in the emission, I change from temperature to divergence. As you can see, all these little particles in the air and how these particles will look like in the renderer, I can show you now by fire up the interactive rendering. And as you can see, all these particles that goes around the fire, okay? So these particles are way too strong. So I bring that down to about 4,000. So there's not so, so uh, dominant, okay? And I bring down the multiplier scale to one. And you can see just partially these particles or dust effect from the fire, okay? And together with a fire, we can have the fire and we have these particles, okay? And now you have something like that. So what you can do is play around with these settings you can use for all these three tabs, emission, absorption, and scattering, you can choose between all the attributes that you exported from the Redshift scene. So we have the Cinema 4D Pyro system, 
bring it out from a redshift scene into a Chaos Corona scene and render out the fire within Chaos Corona. So I hope you like this tutorial. You have learned something. You can use these tips and tricks. I want to say thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please like, comment and subscribe. See you next time and bye everyone.